Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's your Captain Panic speaking to you for another Touch Designer tutorial. So welcome on board. This time I prepared some batik. I don't know if this is... Uh, I think this is a German word for tie-dye. It's a little bit cringe and 2000 12 or something like that but i really really like the organic feeling of this edges which are just kind of kind of cool um also if you don't like the tie-dye look you could just have a firework um which i also don't like i really hate fireworks in real life but i kind of enjoy this thing i created here and I thought, why not do a little tutorial about it? So we will use some sobs for some particles, which will be our firework. And then some touch designer feedback action um, for the spread and everything. And another feedback for some small details like those organic edges here. So, yeah, let's jump on my screen and see you there. Be right back. Okay, welcome on my screen. And now let's start from scratch. So, as you were able to see in the beginning, we are going to create a SOP network first in order to get our particles, which will create our firework um, so first thing we will need is a SOP it will be a sphere SOP which we will connect to a transform which we will connect to a sort And after that sort, we will create a particle. And after that, a texture. Because in order to get the texture on the particles, you will need this texture sop. And now you can already see that something is happening. We, we are getting particles on our sphere. But we will need to make some changes here, but first of all, let's get our network straight so we can see it in the background. Um, yeah, after that, I will create a geometry which will you find and you will find under the comp geometry. Then you need a light and a camera. So then, let's create a render render top which we will connect to a null which we will make visible then let's make our parameters visible by hitting p so when you hit p you get your parameters tab when you hit it again it gets lost so hit it again <laughs> and there in this render setup we will now get our numbers straight by just using a constant chop so just create a constant chop make one channel with the resolution the one i will use 1920 by 1920 and yeah we don't need more right now so make the viewer active export it onto the resolution and also change the pixel format to 32 bit float so we get as much detail as possible. Okay, so excuse me, I just hit my microphone. I hope I you were able to hear me before. <laughs> so um, okay, now I lost a little bit of track and all right, yeah. Now we need to head back into our sobs here so we can see a little bit more what's happening. I will just create a RGB key 
So we get a black background. So we can see those particles better. And also I will create a material under the mat tab, which will be a fong. And then I will just drag it on here, par material. And now we have some white particles. Okay, so first thing we want to do is make our sphere a little bit smaller. So right now it's really big. You can see it when the particles get born again. We want this to be smaller. And I decided to go under the transform tab and turn down the scale to 0.017. I will just copy that and paste it here and here. All right, so another thing we want is we want our sphere to move around. So we could just make this interactive by using a mouse in and just export the TX on the TX axis <laughs> and the Y here. And then we can just move this around, which is cool for interactivity. But right now I am going to use a noise chop because I want everything to be fully generative and not interactive. But that's just because it's easier for the recording. I highly recommend to make everything interactive because I love interactivity. So, but for now, I'm going to use a noise chop. And under the channel tab, I will make a TX and a TY. I will turn on the time slice. And also, I don't know. We'll keep everything else on default and just export TX on X, TY on Y. And now we have a moving sphere. Okay, so another thing we want, because right now our particles get distributed evenly. So this gives us this kind of circles of particles, which we don't want. And that's the reason for this sort here. Because I want to change the point sort from the polygon edges to change it to random. So it's just random particles somewhere on the sphere. And now I want more particles because right now we only have 100 particles, which is not enough. And I'm going to go with 10,000. So we really have this nervous firework going on. And that's basically it with our SOP setup and our firework setup. But we want to bring in some colors onto those particles. So all those particles have some kind of different colors. And we will achieve this by creating a noise top. So noise top. I will drag it in here. Um, export the resolution on the noise, change it to 32 bit float, make it colorful because we want color, so turn off the monochrome, and then just turn down the harmonics. I worked with a period of two, but this is kind of up to you, however, you want your colors to look like. I'm just going with this kind of nice pattern, and in our material, we can create a color map. And we are going to drag this and drag it in here. And voila. <laughs> here we go. Colors on our particles. Easy. But right now it's a little bit too, too dark here. That's because the diffuse is kind of grayish. So it just gets multiplied on it. So I will change this to a really white. Really white white. <laughs> and also... Um, I want the specular to be white, so it just brightens everything up. And yeah, that's it for the material. So we have colorful particles with different colors, which are kind of like a firework, which is exactly what we want. And now we are really done with our SOP network here. And now we will just take care of 
creating some nice feedback thingies. <laughs> so give us some space here. And then create a null because we are going to create a feedback. Then after that null, I will make a comp. I will use the operation mode over for this comp. Then I will create a feedback, drag it into the comp and make this comp the target layer. So now we are kind of tracking every trail of our particles. But right now it's a little bit too, too rough and I want it to be a little bit softer. So after that I will create a blur. So it just softens out everything and I just set the filter size to 8 because I like it really soft. And then after that I created a displace. And now let's take care of our displace image. So I will head out of that feedback, create a comp. Then I will use that null, get into that comp too, and set it to soft light in the operation mode. And after it, I will create a slope. In that slope, I will set the strength to eight and the sample stops to 5 and 5 and we'll connect it here and turn down the displace weight to 0 0.001 I think or maybe even bigger let's make it 0 0.06 yeah maybe that's cool now we also want to be able to reset our feedback. So bring in a keyboard in job, place it above the keyboard here, uh, the feedback here, make the view active, export it on the pulse. So now let's reset it. And now you can already see we're getting some kind of organic, small explosions here, which we'll, we'll need later to get our organic little trails. So let's give us some space again. Make a null after that comp one, because now we will head into another feedback loop. Okay, so again, let's create a comp, set the operation mode to over, then create a level bring it into the comp, set the, um, so the level needs to be above the null here, bring it up and down here we will just insert a feedback. Okay, in that level we placed up here, we will change the opacity to 0.1. Also we will use this keyboard in again to reset this feedback. So right now we won't see anything, <laughs> but this will change in a minute. So after that comp three, we will create a displace, place it down here and we will set the displace weight to minus one and minus one. Then we will make a select and select this feedback, drag it in here, create a slope after that select. Um, I left everything in the slope on default and added a blur after it. The blur I set to 32 on the filter size and pre shrink 2 and then I made it the displace image. And then let's make this displace the target layer for this feedback. And there we go. <laughs> so now we are getting the effect we wanted. So this is really like the watercolorish firework um, 
I waited for my whole life on Sylvester because this is what I want to see. I don't want to hear every noise I get from fireworks. Um, I'm very explicit about my thoughts about fireworks, though this may be my hot take of the tutorial. <laughs> I hope you don't hate me now. Um, I just enjoy animations more than real life. <laughs> okay, so let's head back into into here. Let's get some more contrast in here so we can enjoy our details even more. So after this displays, I added a level. And in that level, I just set the contrast to 1.46. Um, I turned up the brightness to 1.9. Nine and I turned up the gamma to 1.35. I just played around with those numbers basically. And I also upped the black level a bit. But this is totally up to you, however, you want to enjoy your animation. So you could also just not do that and just keep it like this in this soft way. Um, and another thing I did um, in order to get the tie-dye effect you saw in the beginning, I just added another noise, plugged both inputs in here and changed the output to only noise, made it a 32-bit float and turned down the harmonics, turned up the period and turned off the monochrome and there we go this is the tie effect you saw in the beginning if you want different colors you can just change um, the period or whatever the harmonics if you want one more different colors it gets kind of crazy and ugly <laughs> like this but you do you <laughs> and yeah I kinda hate love this animation, as you might have noticed. Um, but yeah, that's it about the tutorial. Um, I hope <laughs> you enjoyed it. I hope you liked some tie-dye. I hope you like some fireworks or not. And I hope you're doing good. That's the most important thing. And I also hope you're staying kind. That's maybe another very important topic. Because it's very easy to be kind. Um, yeah. That's it for today. I hope I will see you next time. I hope you stay creative. Stay healthy. And bye bye.